What's going on fam, it's your boy Rehab back again today with some mildly mediocre content. With the release of Modern Warfare coming at the end of the month, and all of the talk changing from how Activision is going to ruin the game by over monetizing it, to praising Activision for not including loot boxes, I thought it would be cool to do a sort of stock value analysis of Activision and see how that may affect the monetization of Modern Warfare. I would like to specify that I am not a financial analyst, and this is not financial advice. If for some reason you watch this video and suddenly want to buy or sell Activision stock. But I do have a piece of paper with the word finance on it, and I read a book once, so take that as you wish. First of all, Activision Blizzard is a huge company with tons of IPs that all affect the company's performance. For example, the stock recently took a dip due to the Hearthstone Hong Kong China controversy. Not going to get into that because that isn't what this video is about. But obviously, Call of Duty is not the only thing that affects the stock prices of Activision Blizzard. However, Call of Duty is one of their flagship franchises that they rely on quarter after quarter, year after year to bring in loads of revenue. So let's take a look at Activision stock price over the last five years. Although you can see that they are way down off their all-time highs, they're still up almost 200% in the last five years. I think it would be fair to attribute this to the growing popularity of loot boxes and video games. In the fourth quarter report of 2015, Activision reported $4.664 billion in revenue for the trailing 12 months. Black Ops 3 dropped on November 6th of that year, and this is arguably the start of Activision's focus on loot boxes and excessive microtransactions in their games. Since then, Activision has seen large increases in revenue, having reported over $7 billion in revenue for the trailing 12 months every quarter since Q4 2017. The fact is that publishers wouldn't continuously implement these egregious loot boxes and microtransactions if they didn't bring in more revenue than alternative methods. But is this sustainable? It seems like gamers have shown more and more resistance to these so-called surprise mechanics, as they seemingly have gotten worse and worse over the years. But the numbers don't lie. Activision is still making way more money now than they were breaking records for units sold. The negative PR for Activision is irrelevant to them so long as they keep seeing increased revenues. As long as whales are spending money on in-game's purchases, they aren't going away. But is this sustainable from a stock performance perspective? All things are showing that it is not. When professional investors such as Warren Buffett look at a stock, they try to analyze the company to see if it is undervalued or overvalued. Here are a few things they look at. The price to earnings ratio is the most common way to assess whether a stock is over or undervalued. This is calculated by taking the latest closing price and dividing it by the most recent earnings per share. Per Benjamin Graham, who some believe to be the best investor to have ever lived, you want to invest in companies with a price-earnings ratio of 9 or less. Activision is almost triple that, currently at 25 price-to-earnings as of October 11th. This means that the earnings the company is bringing in per investor's share does not support the current price. Activision hasn't seen anything close to a price-earnings ratio of 9 since Q4 2012, when the stock price was a measly $10.00 and Call of Duty fans were basking in the glory of Black Ops 2. Another number investors look for is positive earnings per share growth. They want to see positive earnings per share growth over the past 5 years with no earnings deficits. They also like to see the earnings higher in the most recent year than 5 years ago. Companies with earnings deficits during the past 5 years are considered high risk companies. Activision doesn't pass this test either, having shown an earnings deficit in Q4 2017, and a huge decrease in earnings per share in 2017 as a whole. Sometimes price-to-earnings ratios can be misleading, 
since it's based on past data and there's no guarantee earnings will remain the same. Because of this, investors will also look at the price to book value of a company. This is calculated by taking the current price divided by the most recent book value per share for a company. The book value is the value of the company per its balance sheet, and this provides a good indication of the underlying value of the company. Professional investors look for companies with a price to book value ratio of less than 1.2. Activision's price to book value ratio is 3.43 as of October 11th. It has not been under 1.2 since Q3 2013. So to tie this all in, what does this mean for Call of Duty Modern Warfare that is set to release on October 26th of this month? Well, Activision is an overvalued company. They saw a massive growth over the past 5 to 10 years, and this is not sustainable. Professional investors, the smart money, know that this isn't sustainable. So what can Activision do in order to keep their stock prices afloat? Promise more and more revenue and increased earnings every quarter, every year, on each and every earnings call to investors. Ladies and gentlemen, there is no end to this cycle of microtransaction nonsense that has infected not only Call of Duty, but all Activision published games. It has been confirmed by Activision this week that Call of Duty will feature a battle pass system and will not feature any sort of loot boxes and the community seems to be throwing a parade. But buyer beware, the specific wording of the post left some doors open, and I can promise you that Activision will get their money. Pretty Good Gaming made a great video on this, and I will link it in the description below. But at the end of the day, you never know what Activision has waiting down the line, after the community lets their guard down. Modern Warfare may very well launch with a battle pass and a well-received microtransaction system. But after a few months pass and Modern Warfare isn't hitting the revenue projections that was forecasted to investors, the community is not going to like what happens next. Whether it be them increasing the battle pass buy-in, increasing the grind to earn in-game items, or flat out adding loot boxes, changes will be made because Activision needs Call of Duty Modern Warfare to succeed. In the world of business, there is no such thing as enough money. The fact is that the more money that Call of Duty brings in, the more money it needs to bring in next quarter or next year to show an increase in revenue. Money talks, and the only chance the community has is if Activision sees more money being made through the Battle Pass system than they've seen in years prior with loot boxes. But is that plausible? Game publishers love loot boxes for a reason, because people continuously buy them. If the battle pass isn't making enough money, supply drops will be added, and they will include the best weapons in the game. And if supply drops in Modern Warfare bring in record-setting revenue because there was a tiny chance to unlock an overpowered one-tapping machine, you should expect that next loot box to include a chance of getting a one-time use tactical nuke. Because as happy as Activision would be to tell all its investors that Modern Warfare made more money this quarter than any Call of Duty before it, they know deep down that now they just need to make more money than that next quarter. If you hate microtransactions in your games and are hoping loot boxes don't ruin Modern Warfare for you, you better hope some legislation gets passed in the next couple months, because I truly think that's your only hope. In the eyes of a corporation, there is no endgame to this, just more money to be made.